All right. So, hi, Allie. Tell me about yourself. Well, my name is Allie, and I'm the Children's Services and Volunteer Manager here at Hamilton Transitional Housing. Um, I mean, my, I've been in my role for almost five years now, um, and I've lived in San Francisco for almost nine. Um, is that enough information? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, just go in, go in a little bit more about your experiences as an ally working with this organization. Yeah, I mean, I think for me personally, being an ally means knowing my privilege and how it comes to play in my day-to-day -day interactions. And I also think it's like knowing when to speak up and then when also to take a back seat um, and it's not about me. And so I, yeah. That's wonderful. I mean, and I think that's the, sometimes it can be underestimated, the power in just being a part of the collective force and kind of being mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm gonna take a back seat and be a part of it, but I don't need to be um, necessarily the loudest voice in the room. I think, I think you're incredibly wise for being able to have that uh, right. understanding. I, I really wish more people did, to be quite honest. <laughs> being able to amplify voices, right? And experiences that I'm not gonna experience, but I can be sympathetic towards that and I can listen to those experiences, but just being able to be there for people. So what are some things that you've learned, some knowledge that you've gained just by way of being in these spaces and using your your education, using your life experiences to kind of um, support the, the participants? What's something you've learned? Right. Well, I think specifically my role within working with children, there's this James Baldwin quote that I love, and it just talks about the classroom. I'm going to read it really quick. But um, it's it says, let's begin saying that we are living through a dangerous time. And I mean, he said this like 60 years ago too and so we're still kind of living in a dangerous time and have been for so long but to any citizen of this country who figures himself as responsible and particularly those of you who deal with the minds and hearts of young people must be prepared to go for broke or just put it another way you must understand that in the attempt to correct many generations of bad faith and cruelty when it is operating not only in the classroom but in society you will meet the most the most fantastic the most brutal and the most determined resistance and there's no like per point in pretending that that's not going to happen. Yeah. And so I just think like when I work with youth, I want to be really, I always want to be someone who leans into those hard conversations out of love. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's really important. Mm, I love that. So tell me if you don't mind, tell me more about like how, if they have, how has Hamilton families helped you like confront or continue the conversation about privilege, maybe the privilege you experience it, mm -hmm. or um, the privilege that you've been able to kind of understand a little bit more throughout life? And how has that helped you directly in your work, kind of understanding or confronting whatever privileges? Right, I mean, I think in my own personal life, I mean, I was a sociology major in college and I and I lived in San Francisco and I did all of that and I, and I read theory and listened to stories, but I think there's a difference between myself as a white woman operating my day-to-day -day life and then walking into the emergency shelter and in the tenderloin and you know the places and communities where people are going through these really hard things and racism is so apparent i mean i think specifically if we're looking at san francisco and hamilton in itself it's what 52 percent of our population is black and only five percent of the population in san francisco is black mm -hmm. so what does that say yeah. um so yeah, I think that that is part of that. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and, and so uh, as someone who like has a limited um, grasp over what Hamilton Families does in its fullness, can you tell me more about like what supportive services Hamilton Families provides? Like tell me, go more in depth for like the everyday human who would want to know. Right, I think as a whole, the agency is housing first, right? So we believe that everyone deserves a home and it's a human basic right. And I think there, Nadine Burke Harris does, um, she talks about ACEs, so adverse childhood experiences. And so there's all these things that children can go through before they're 18 and they can lead to health effects. And so housing is one of those things. Also racism is one of those community factors in that, that has like huge health risk and problems. And so I think that by addressing housing in itself, or helping people, I think, as far as at least at, at transitional housing in our residential program, our other one, um, the shelter, we um, have after school programs. Right now we're operating learning hubs. So 
kids who don't necessarily have a safe and stable place to be able to carry out their education or parents who have to work and are essential workers in San Francisco or helping them be able to do what they need to do and operate and, and be able to have part of their education. We connect kids with childcare. We, um, yeah, we do all of these different things. I think like even in our after school program, I believe in like community agreements in programming that's dictated by the youth. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's really important because like as a white woman, there's some things I'm never going to experience, but I can listen and create a space for people and kids, especially feel comfortable in expressing themselves, mm -hmm. which I mean, is part of critical pedagogy in itself, which is the idea that you're going to create a space in your classroom or playroom or whatever that looks like where students are able to develop their own sense of, you know, engagement with the world. Absolutely. You know, I, part of the identity that I believe I've kind of grown to love as a black human in America is the idea that the legacy that I live my life as a part of um, is steeped in so many things. And so I think, I think about it quite a bit throughout every month of the year, every week of the year about like, what will my legacy be as a black person? What legacies am I carrying forward that, you know, predated me? And so I wanted to ask you what, as an ally, what do you hope is Hamilton family's legacy 30 years from now, five years from now, you know, uh, and how can you, how are you as an ally being a positive force to help that along? Ooh, I love that question. Um, <laughs> Well, when I think about the legacy of Hamilton, or I think about what I really care about as far as the legacy of Hamilton, I mean, first off, I really care about the impact that we leave on the families that we're working with right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I also care about the impact we leave on the Bay Area community in general and San Francisco. Um, like we were talking about before with like the 52% of the families being Black, but only 5% of, of San Francisco being Black, like it's abundantly clear what we're seeing, the effects of racism, right? And, and just who the city is accessible for, um, especially with gentrification or colonialism, whatever you want to call it at this point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but my hope for Hamilton families is that with the right interventions, specifically with our youth, that we could help eliminate the recidivism rates of them experiencing homelessness when they're adults or when their kids have kids that we're really stopping it now and being able to provide them opportunities and experiences, which will help them not have to experience the same thing that they themselves as youth are experiencing. So. Absolutely. I, I love that answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think in a micro sense too, I just hope that the, the black children that go through Hamilton families feel loved and saved and heard by adults who care about them and whether it's like volunteers or other participants or staff like I just think that that is so important and that people are able to like experience joy especially when you know like housing instability and now we're in a pandemic and now we have all these other things like I hope that they can still come away from these experiences and not be homeless again but also think back and like I still have moments of joy and there are still people who are looking out for me and that loved me. Yeah, I mean, and we, I think I myself um, sometimes forget how those seemingly small things have such rippling impacts and effects on, on our lives when someone just sees you and gives you the humanity that any human deserves. I think uh, it can be easy to forget how powerful that is. Final question. Mm -hmm. What is something that you would say to support other white people in their journey to allyship, in their journey to help support humanity and being its best, um, what would you say? Um, do the work, first off. I think that that is like the most important thing. And just acknowledge your own privilege and put yourself in situations where you're uncomfortable. I think that if you're consistently, you know, like with your white friends talking about certain things that you're comfortable with and all of that kind of stuff, you're never going to grow or understand different perspectives. And so I think that like doing the work and like letting yourself be uncomfortable and make mistakes, like that's really important. Um, Laverne um, Cox, I went to a talk that she did like years ago, but it's always stuck with me that she said, you know, 
you have to have really hard conversations to grow. But as long as you do them out of love and want to have them out of love and, and you're able to talk about those with people who understand and trust and know where you're coming from, I think that that's really the important thing. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Allie. <laughs> like, I, 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 I've been saying to Corey a lot recently that the world as I perceive it and experience it is a very scary place. And people like Corey and yourself who are just gentle reminders that like, there are people out here who just want the best for humanity and they don't mind doing that work is, is a helpful remedy to like the harsh experiences that I think I've had. So just thank you for being a part of the world in the way that you are. <laughs> thank you for doing all of this for Hamilton and for everyone. And yeah. I'm glad I can. I, I am truly glad I'm in a position that I can be of help, even if it's just, like I said, my entire mission is just to get traffic to Hamilton right. Finley's um, website and social media platforms, because that just having the knowledge, I, earlier we were speaking to another um, um, part of the Hamilton family's family, and they were just mentioning that, you know, even if you don't have something physical to offer to someone, the knowledge you can pass along that could save a life is also so important. And that was actually something to me that I was like, duh, like, I may not have the information, but I probably have one of Corey's cards in my wallet. So if I experience someone who needs, you know, a shelter or so, you know, support in that way, that that could also be incredibly beneficial to them. And and this is gonna think I think uh, be really helpful to a lot of people hearing you speak and and kind of abdicate as well. So thank you. Yeah, of course. When they asked me, I was like, "Are you, you guys want me? Are you sure?" But I'm just like, "Oh, okay, yeah." You, I mean. Um, I asked them like, who are some people and your name and a few other names like popped up immediately. So thank you for having the time and taking the time.